Hi everyone. Today we are going to make cheesy cheese pizza crust pizza. I got this recipe from the rule.me website, which is one of my favorite keto websites. If you are just getting started on keto, want to know the basics, keto calculator, great recipes, go to rule.me. There are other great websites out there, but this is just one of my favorites. Okay, as with any recipe, I like to make sure I have all of my ingredients and my utensils together. So, of course, we know I like to use spatulas. Spatulas are my favorite. And for this recipe, we are going to be using a glass baking dish. As you can see, I put aluminum foil in my baking dish. I always cook with foil because it makes for easier cleanup. And I went ahead and sprayed the bottom of the pan so that the pizza wouldn't stick. The recipe calls for eight ounces or one pack of cream cheese. So I have that and it says that the cream cheese needs to be room temperature. So I've let this sit out for a while so that it'll get room temperature. However, if you don't have time, you can sit it in some hot water for about one to two minutes and it'll bring it to room temperature. Okay, it asks for a half a pound of ground beef. I always use ground chuck because with the keto diet, we want the fattier pieces of meat and ground chuck has a lot of nice fat and good flavor. And it also asks for, I hope I pronounced this right, a chorizo sausage. I took the sausage and I decased the sausage. Decasing means I cut it out of the wrapping that it's in so that I put it, mix it in with the meat. It calls for two large eggs. I use brown eggs. Ask me the difference between brown eggs and white eggs. Nothing really. The beet color is different from what I hear on the chicken. Okay, it asks for... A quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. One teaspoon of garlic powder, which I already have here. Now the rest of the spices I mix together because it's very important to read the recipe before you cook it. And the recipe basically told me that I'm going to use these spices together. So I went ahead and mixed them together, but I'm going to read them off to you. It asks for a half a teaspoon of cumin, a quarter teaspoon of basil, a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, and salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to use, I use pink Himalayan salt. I don't use iodized salt. I always use my Himalayan pink salt. And I'm going to use fresh ground pepper for this. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, the first thing that you should always do when baking things is preheat the oven. It says preheat the oven to 375. I like to preheat the oven at least 30 minutes before I start cooking because I want the oven to be at an even temperature when I put the recipe in the oven. So I preheated my oven. So now we wants to take the cream cheese, the Parmesan cheese, the eggs, the garlic, one teaspoon, and some pepper. I'm gonna use my fresh peppercorn. I'm gonna ground some pepper into that. And it says mix well with a hand blender. I didn't pull out the hand blender. So give me one second and I'll be right back. Back. And now I have my hand blender and I'm going to mix it with my hand blender. Oh, 
always like to stop in the midst of my mixing and take my spatula and smooth the ingredients down to make sure I get all of the ingredients together. Okay, you mix it together until you until it's smooth. Now I'll show you what it looks like. It's rather smooth. Okay, so now we're gonna take our pan that we got together and we greased and we sprayed it. And we're gonna take our mixture and spread it in the pan. Make sure you spread it out evenly because this is the basis for your dough. So you want to have it spread out evenly. When cooking, sometimes I have to use my fingers. I'm not going to say everybody use their fingers, but sometimes I have to use my fingers in order to make sure that everything is off the spatula because I use spatulas a lot. You'll never see me lick my fingers while I'm cooking and I always, always wash my hands afterwards. So let's spread that. Continue to spread until you feel as though you have a nice consistency. I'm gonna put the spatula down for a second and use my fingers. Cause sometimes with the spatula, the more, <clears throat> excuse me, the more I spread, the more it picks up. So I'm just going to use my fingers for this to make sure it's spread out evenly. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands. Okay. So after you spread your mixture out, it looks like this. We're gonna put this in the oven hmm. um it says put this in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes we're gonna do 15 minutes and the reason why I'm doing 15 minutes is because I've made this recipe before and 12 minutes just didn't do it. So I'm going to do 15 minutes. Be back soon. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to cook in the oven, we're going to go ahead and cook our meat. So I have a nonstick pan that I use and I have a wooden spatula. I want to go ahead and put my meat in the nonstick pan. I always use a wooden spatula because I don't want to scrape my nonstick pan. So I'm going to add the meat to it, let it cook down for just a bit, and then you're going to add your spices. Some fresh pepper. And some salt. Good. 
Don't be afraid of the salt when you're on your keto diet. Especially if you're just starting, it can help with the headaches that you may have while you're detoxing from all the sugars and carbs that you need to eat. So don't be afraid of the salt. Another important thing while you're on the keto diet is to drink a lot of water. This, today I'm drinking tea, but best believe I'm going to have plenty of water after this tea. If you notice, I keep looking at my watch. I have an Apple Watch. It actually shows me the video while I'm recording it. So it's kind of cool. But, cooking up my sausage. It doesn't take long for that sausage to cook up. It smells delicious. The sausage and the ground beef. I keep saying sausage, but it's sausage and ground beef. They actually produce a good flavor when they're cooked together. So my sausage is all done. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to take it off of the stove. And I'm just going to put my grease splatter cover on top of it so that it doesn't splatter. I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to wait for the piece of dough to come out of the oven. So while we're still waiting for that to cook and when after my meat cooled down a little bit, I put it in a bowl with a paper towel just to drain some of the grease. Because we want a good flavor and a good texture, but I don't want the top of the pizza full of grease. Now, another thing is that when you go to look at the recipe on the website, it doesn't specifically tell you how much pizza marinara sauce and mozzarella cheese to use for the pizza. So we're going to guesstimate. I'm going to use a cup of marinara sauce and about six ounces of cheese. The marinara sauce that I'm using is Bon Jovio marinara sauce. It's by Bon Bon Jovi. I always like to get marinara sauce that has the less carbs and the less amount of sugars because once again this is for a keto diet which is low carbs high fat and also I don't like extra sugar because I'm diabetic and I don't want to add anything to my food. So I'm going to use a cup of marinara sauce. Hope we have a cup in here. It's about a cup. Good. And as far as the cheese, I'm going to do about six ounces of cheese. If as we're putting it on, we find that it's too much, we can always not put all of it on there. But I'd rather have too much than have not enough. Also, I'm using my scale in order to measure my cheese i always like precise measurements when i'm baking or when i'm cooking i used to bake a lot of cupcakes and i used to have a cupcake business and the recipes only came out right when i used precise measurements so i actually have two types of scales i have a flat scale and i have a scale with a bowl or that allows a bowl to sit on it my flat scale i usually use when i'm measuring things on a plate Sometimes when I'm measuring meats and different things like that, my bowl scale I use when I'm measuring liquids and I'm with, when I'm measuring really heavy things. And also if I want to measure something inside of a bowl and then transfer that bowl, say, to the microwave or someplace else, I'll use this scale. You could do all of that on a flat scale, 
but I have both, so I use both. So I'm going to measure six ounces of mozzarella cheese out. Okay, way to cut off while I'm getting ready to use it. Put that back in the bowl. Make sure you zero it out. a lot of mozzarella cheese on this diet because my favorite thing to make is the pepperoni pizza and that video is also on my YouTube page but it's my absolute favorite thing to make so I use a lot of mozzarella cheese. Alrighty the crust is still in the oven it still has a couple minutes left. I'm going to stop the video and it says after the crust comes out of the oven to let it cool down for 10 minutes. So I'm actually going to come back after the crust has cooled down. Okay, so I'm back. The crust has had a chance to cool off for 10 minutes. And you know it'll, it's good because it's separating from the foil. So now what you, we need to do is add our tomato sauce. It says add your tomato sauce and we're going to add our mozzarella and we're going to put it back in the oven and let it cook for 10 minutes. Now with the tomato sauce and the mozzarella, I'm gonna add some extra seasonings because I like my pizza spicy. Not everyone do, but I like my pizza spicy. So, and I like my pizza to have a lot of Italian flavor because that's what pizza is, it's Italian. So, I'm gonna add a bit more Italian seasoning always add it to my sauce and some crushed red peppers now remember these are extra steps that I added you do not have to add them and they are not a part of this recipe so I'm gonna take the roughly six ounces of cheese that I measured out and I'm gonna spread it along the pizza Like I said, don't be afraid to use your fingers. It's your food. Just make sure you wash your hands. Okay, so we have that spread. We're going to put it back in the oven for 10 minutes. Alrighty, be back soon. So, our th 10 minutes are up, the cheese is melted, and it's ready to come out the oven. So, we're going to take it out the oven. Now, melted cheese. Yum. And then, what we're going to do is, we're going to set the oven to broil, because the next instructions directions tell us to broil the pizza for three to five minutes so i'm gonna go ahead and set the oven from bake to broil And I'm not sure about your oven, but on my oven, the boil temperature is 500. So, 
After you do that, you take your meat. I'm not gonna use a spatula, I'm gonna use my hands. And you place it all over your pizza. It just looks delicious. Make sure you get it all over the pizza. And I don't know how your oven works, but for my oven, it always seems that it moves to boil really quickly. Even if it's at 375, once I push it to boil at 500, I guess because it doesn't have to heat the whole oven up, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know how ovens work. I just know they give me a temperature. But we're going to put this back in to boil for three to five minutes and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Do you want to see what it looks like before it's going in? All right, so let's. It said three to five minutes. I'm gonna boil it for four. See you soon. So I'm back and the oven just beeped and it's time to take our cheesy cheese pizza crust pizza out of the oven. Look at that. That looks absolutely delicious. Can you see that? Of course, I'm going to take a picture and you'll be able to see pictures at the end. Enjoy your day. Until the next video. Bye.